Alleluia. 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 Jesus is the Lord. Jesus June 26th, 1982. The Ojibwe Indians of Northern Ontario are gathered here at the Martyr's Shrine in Midland, Ontario. They are holding a prayer weekend. This is significant because they have organized this event and are leading each other in prayer, something unheard of a few years ago. Significant as well, because until now, some Indians have resisted coming to the Martyr's Shrine. As chosen people, we are called to do some very difficult things. Chief Peter Johnston is from the, the Serpent River Indian Reservation. He's greatly respected, both as a Catholic leader and as an orator. His influence spreads well beyond the 180 people on his reserve. He, like others, has avoided the shrine for years. Today, however, he is here. It is good that we are here. I have had in my own heart doubts myself. Doubts with this place and the things that are associated with it. I need reconciliation. I need healing. Peter Johnston has always suffered from the portrayal of Indians as murderers of the blessed martyrs. In fact, Many Indians were devoted Christians who suffered the same persecution as the martyrs. In the early 1600s, Father Jean de Brébeuf settled here at St. Marie among the Hurons, fired by Christ's mandate, Go ye and teach all nations. By the time he died, 25 years later, his vision of establishing a native church was starting to take root. Nearly 7,000 Hurons had professed Christianity. Some were being prepared to succeed the Jesuits as clergy. In 1649, during an Iroquois attack, many Hurons willingly died alongside of Brebeuf, paying an enormous human price for their faith. One of the most devoted of the early native Christians was this man, Joseph Chiwetenwa. He was so profoundly moved by the word of Christ that he boldly preached on all occasions, even during the Indian tribal meetings. As a tribute to his faith, one missionary said, in this Christian, we had our faith after God. Holy Father, we thank you for Joseph during the Indian Prayer Weekend, Bishop Alex Carter dedicated this statue of Joseph Chiwatenwa. By this act, the Martyr's Shrine is recognizing the courage of the early native Christians. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bishop Carter has long been a friend of the Indians. His goal has always been to promote their leadership within the church. Just ten years ago, they had none. Bishop Carter set about to change that. He did so by delegating Indians to lead in their own communities. In this way, he implemented the ideas of Vatican II. Now, I believe the Indian faith will only reach its fulfillment when their own culture is revived and they themselves have their own spiritual leaders, their own uh, priests, deacons, and those who will be their leaders in, the ch in their church, in the church, in our church and their church, in one church, but a church that will, in which they will express themselves in a way that they will recognize their old traditions. Now, to my mind, that is how Indians should be worshiping, worshiping in a language that means something to them, 
the language in which they can express their love. Because what is our, uh, our expression is our love for God, our faith in God, our belief in God, our hope, our trust. And it's got to come spontaneously if it's going to be real. This is Angus Naganagijic, 76 years old and a deeply religious Catholic. For 50 years, Angus has presided over the funeral rites of the Ojibwe people. All the traditional Ojibwe prayers and hymns are engraved in his memory. Angus's unshakable faith in eternal life comforts the bereaved. Because he's recognized as a spiritual leader by his own people, the Jesuits extended an invitation to Angus to become a deacon. Angus accepted. Bishop Carter ordained him in 1975. Getting Indians to accept religious leadership from one of their own has not always been easy. At first, they couldn't see the advantage of developing their own leaders. But they were a little hesitant, and uh, there was a little uh, opposition at first to that among the tribe. Well, who, you know, they weren't going to have it, one of their own sort of become a leader. And that's, that now, thank God, has been overcome. And I can see more and more, not only their acceptance, but their, their delight. Father Mike Murray, a Jesuit, trains deacons at Anderson Lake in northern Ontario. He's committed to Bishop Carter's vision of establishing a native church. Presently, we are, our policy, our very, very clear policy is that, um, is that we are here to, to have a different, a new kind of presence among the native people. And uh, what we're trying to say is that we are withdrawing from the communities. Um, the, uh, the church, so-called, is, is not going to be built around us. It's not going to satellite around us. We're very serious about, uh, about our commitment to, to fomenting, to, to putting in place, to assisting, really, the, uh, the birth of a native church. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has called us to be his people and has saved us through Jesus. Let us pray to our Lord and ask his help. Father Murray teaches the emerging native leaders to understand the word of God, to communicate that word, and to administer the sacraments. But at the heart of this program is the spiritual formation of the individual. Richard Sayers, he is a deacon candidate. I don't have too much education, but when I walk and I look at the trees, the water, the birds, even grass and flowers, it brings so much to me what the Lord created, the beauty. A few years ago, oh, it wasn't like that. It was there, but I never noticed the beauty of it. Life has been difficult for Richard and his wife, Phyllis. Over the years, they have been devastated by the deaths of 11 of their children. They became alcoholics. They were unemployed. And I 
I always, I guess I was always close to the Lord, always, as far as I could remember. But then, just about 12 years ago, I didn't think there was a God, especially when I lost the children, eh? When I lost one child after another, I didn't think there was a God. There, I said there couldn't have been no God. But now I got a, such a, a better understanding of God, how he works in our lives, how he has taken in that bitterness we had within ourselves. Because he did, he did, he loves us. And I go, I know where my children are now that someday we'll, we'll go to be with them. It was at Anderson Lake that Phyllis and Richard Sayers finally came to see the will of God working in their lives. The strength they now have, they share with others through their music and stories. I know my Savior Love was one thing I never used. Never around my home or even when I was a kid. A child, I didn't hear that. After I got married, I, once I hear that, I thought, don't, don't, don't mention love to me. I don't like to hear that word. No. Praise God, a few months ago I was set free from that and healed. And I must give all the glory to God. These stories touch lives no one else can reach. Despairing listeners often reach out and seek healing for their own lives. This is the way of the modern church the church that encourages Indians to lead Indians to Christ. I believe that the church is a body and uh, that body is alive and it breathes and it moves. Uh, it is spirit filled. Speaking is Chief Peter Johnston of the Serpent River Indian Reservation. As pastor, he's overseeing the smooth running of the annual church bazaar. Under the G, 57. Under the O, 68. Mr. Dixon, I'd just like you to know on behalf of all the members of our band that we've really appreciated what you've done for us. And we'd like to In his role of chief, Peter takes this opportunity to publicly thank a local school official for his enthusiastic work with the kids. Peter feels it is crucial that he leads in both religious and secular affairs on the reserve. I see the spiritual affairs of the church and the church as whole as being uh, much broader in context. My role as the elected leader of the community uh, the, my role as spiritual leader also, I don't feel that the two roles can be divorced at all. The role of the wife as her husband's partner is crucial in the Indian community. So important is this role, the Jesuits will not undertake to train any man as deacon without the full support of his wife. Millie Johnson is Peter's wife and mother of their 11 daughters. Without her agreement, Peter wouldn't have considered becoming a deacon. Not only is Millie supportive of Peter, she is active in the church. As lay minister of the Eucharist, Millie brings communion to the old and the shut-ins on the reserve. Hello, Louie. How are you today? <laughs> today, she visits Genevieve and Louis Day. My brother, my sister, to prepare ourselves for this celebration, let us call to mind our sins. The days have been mandated by the bishop to pray for the needs of the community. 
It was through their prayers and encouragement that Peter and Millie Johnston felt the strength for Peter to pursue his vision of becoming a deacon. I thank you, Louie and Genevieve, for the encouraging for Jesus using us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please talk to us. Body of Christ, Louie. Body of Christ, Jesus. Amen. Peter did become a deacon, and his people are finding fulfillment in the leadership of the church. There remains a further step, the need for Indian priests and bishops. I hope very much that we will find vocations among the Indian people. There is one uh, difficulty, and I think that we'd be uh, foolish not to face that difficulty, and that is we may have very great difficulty in finding uh, or being able to establish a celibate priesthood. In the Celibacy church, is alien to Indian customs and traditions. They see the role of the family as essential to their way of life. I would hope that uh, this question will be studied very seriously by the central authorities of our church. We will certainly have to study the need for ordaining some married men among our Indian people to for, fulfill the role of priest. And if that's the only way we're going to get priests, and I think we have a certain obligation of making that clear to those who have the final say in the matter. Personally, I'm convinced that I have, among my deacons, I have one or two who would make excellent priests. I believe it must be uh, the, that the Indian married clergy must develop. And uh, maybe God is using me to, as an instrument to, to bring about that design and that it may be for somebody else. I'm prepared to accept that. I, I, maybe I'm afraid. <laughs> maybe I'm afraid. Maybe I'm afraid that maybe he really does want me as a priest. <laughs> The seeds of leadership have been planted. At long last, the Ojibwe people are beginning to feel the joy of loving God in a way that is harmonious with their traditions. And so it is. 300 years after the death of Brebeuf, his vision of a true native church is coming to life.